21 year old man. He is currently unemployed, homeless, and has charges pending due to a number of bounce checks written over the past several months. Marcel reports that both his parents were addicted to drugs and he experienced physical, sexual, and emotional abuse throughout his childhood at their hands. Marcel's mother died of liver disease at the age of 37. Marcel also reports that at the age of 14, he was kicked out of the family home because his father suspected that he was gay. Although they live in the same town, he has not had contact with either his father or stepmother in seven years. Marcel describes his relationship with his older sister as fair. Marcel is not presently involved in a steady relationship, but does have a network of friends in the LGBT community with whom he stays with on and off. At the time that he left home, Marcel survived by becoming involved in sexual relationships with older men, many of whom were also abusive. He has had numerous sexual partners, both male and female, over the past seven years has traded sex for drugs and money, has had sex under the influence of drugs and alcohol, and has been made to have sex against his will. Marcel identifies himself as bisexual and not gay. like to introduce myself. So my name is Basant. I've been working here for about uh, two years. Um, I have a bachelor's in social work. Um, so um, I don't know if you have any questions for me. How long did you say? Uh, two years. Okay. I've worked in uh, I've worked in the field before, so it's not my first place working. Um, so before we start doing anything. I just would like to explain to you what our um, confidentiality agreement is, okay. just um, just in case. So anything that you say here is between you and I. Um, nothing goes away, uh, gets out. Uh, sometimes I'll be writing notes, but those are those will be locked away in a file cabinet. It's locked. No one has the key to it. I only uh, only I have access to it. Um, however, there's a few. Um, there's a few exceptions that I might have to break that, okay? All that right. confidentiality. So in case you, pre in case that I see that you present uh, dangerous, danger to yourself or others, um, that means if, um, if I suspect that you're suicidal or you're about to hurt someone, then I might have to report that to the police or any other authorities that might need to get involved. Um, so if I, susp if I uh, suspect that there's um, um, abuse of a child under 16, I would have to call authorities for that too, for so the CAS, that's the Children's Aid Society, or um, police, and if that's ne if that's needed, um, uh, or if um, if there's an order by court, if in, I don't know for any reason the court orders me to give them my notes or anything regarding the case, that's when I would have to uh, also uh, break our confidentiality. Mm -hmm. One last thing is if you give me a written um, or a signed. Uh, uh, authorization for me to release your forms to a doctor or another counselor or any other reason. Okay? Okay. Um, so those are the exceptions. Um, I'll just get you to read it. Do you need a minute? Yes. Okay. So there's a pen. Just read it and I'll be right back, okay? Okay.
questions for me? Yes. Um, you know, you're saying that first one you said, um, if you present a danger to yourself or others. Mm -hmm. So, like, what if I came in here, like, hung over from the night before? Would I, like, have that stuff? Like, would you have to waive the confidentiality for that? Um, see, no, you are not presenting a danger to yourself or anyone else. Um, you, it's not in your best interest, but that's, um, we can talk about that later on. Mm -hmm. um, however, that's not like, um, I look at the positive fact that you are choosing to come here. The fact that you're coming, that's a very positive thing. You're choosing to come and talk to, to, talk to me and uh, seeking help, that's all right. But uh, I wouldn't have to waive confidentiality for that. Okay. All right. All right. So, so let's get you to sign right here and date. Idea of why you're here, but I would like to hear from you. If you don't mind. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I'm, it's my first time ever doing something like this. Uh, my friend Candy told me about it. She was telling me that it may help me, you know, get past some of the things that I've gone through. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have a job right now. Um, kind of living on my own, I got no support. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, what are kind of, what are the things that you've been through? Let me see that. Um, I've been living on my own since I was 14. Didn't have the best relationship with my mom or my dad. I haven't even spoken to my, my dad in like, I think it's going on seven years now. Mm -hmm. um, my mom's dead. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just basically the only person I have in my life and support is Candy. Okay. And how did you How did you meet Candy? Um, well, when I uh, got kicked out when I was younger, mm -hmm. I um, I needed to make money, so you know, I kind of um started living on the streets and doing what I needed to do to make some money. Mm -hmm. And uh, I met her. She worked in the same sort of field. So, you know, we became close like that and been friends ever since. Okay. And then she got out and I was still there, so, yeah. So when you say the field, what, what, do, you, what do you mean? Um, I was um, having sex for money. Mm -hmm. It started off with just the one person, and um, that person kind of pulled me on and started having me do it with other people, mm -hmm. uh, both men and women. So, yeah, it's the only way I could make any money. I didn't really finish school or nothing like that, so I did what I had to do. Okay. And you said you started that when you were 14? Yeah. Maybe like a few months after I I got kicked off from my parents' house, I mm -hmm. needed to find a way, so I did what I had to do. What were you doing before that, in the few months? You just staying at friends' places? And yeah, just, just roaming, really. Mm -hmm. Trying to find ways to like stay afloat, living at people's houses, going on the street, mm -hmm. stealing, whatever I could do. Okay. Um. So you said Candy got out and she uh, she uh, referred you here? Okay. Yeah. Okay. She was uh she had, um, joined this agency or started going to this agency mm -hmm. called the, the five well this one five one nine and mm -hmm. we met up and she started telling me about how like they really helped her and they pushed her in the right path and you know helped her find work and turned her life around. So I'm like, why can't I do that? I'm not really, <laughs> not really enjoying what I do right now. Mm -hmm. So, well, there's definitely ways we can help you out. Um, so you said, um, you said you were homeless too, no? Yeah. Okay. I am. So you're in need of a home. Mm -hmm. 
homeless. I don't have a job at the moment besides, you know, streets. And I have a few pending charges at the moment. I signed a few checks that bounced, so I, don't, I really don't have much money. Okay, so you need um, so you need uh, legal uh, aid as well. Yeah, I can't afford a lawyer. Um, no, there's there's ways out there we can help you with the legal aid. You don't actually have to pay for it. Um, so what actually helped you through the hardships you've been through? Really, just focusing and trying to focus more on God and you know having faith that I'm gonna get through it all. That's basically, it. I just I. I didn't feel like I had any real support from anything else, mm -hmm. so I had to find something. So, so you think we, uh, your religious beliefs help you through a lot of the hardships you've faced and kind of helped you uh, get through them? Yeah, because yeah. based off of what I do at any time, something could happen, you know. Mm -hmm. So I gotta pray that nothing does. I can do my job and get away scot free, basically. Mm -hmm. So, um, so if you don't mind me asking, what, uh, why did your uh, father kick you up when you were 14? Um, well, he kind of thought that I was, um, he thought I was gay. Mm -hmm. He never really asked me or nothing. Um, because he used to see me and, and, like, in my home, it was, like, really homophobic. So, I really couldn't. I was really like confused about what I wanted because mm -hmm. my family's telling me one thing and I'm feeling and thinking another. Mm -hmm. So I just had to try and like, you know, keep it to myself. But I guess he, I guess I didn't hide it as well. So he kicked me out for it. And is that why you don't talk to him anymore for the past seven years? Is that the reason why? Um, that and um, a couple of years before. I got kicked out while my mom was still alive and all that. He physically and sexually abused me. And um, my mother used to physically abuse me as well, so. Yeah, once I got out, I just didn't want to have any connection with him at all. And once she died, I was, it was like, hey, at least I got away from one of them, you know, mm -hmm. so. Is there any um, way you want to uh, rebuild that connection, or you just don't want to have anything to do with them anymore? Not with, uh, not with my dad. I just, I want nothing to do with that guy. No. Okay. My one thing is, I do have a sister, but we don't really talk too much anymore. We used to before, mm -hmm. like when I first got kicked out, but now we don't really talk. She's got, she's got things doing. Okay. I'm busy too, so. Um, so you would like to rebuild that connection with your sister again? I'll we'll try, but she's not really too accepting of what I do. So I know until I, I stop or have a way of stopping, mm -hmm. she doesn't want to be around me. Okay. Um, I have a question for you, though. Are you safe where you are right now? Are you, can you leave what you're doing right now, or? Uh, not really. Well, I wouldn't say, I would say I'm safe, but I would say I'm not safe at the same time. Like, I get protection, but I can't leave this person, because they, they're kind of, kind of run my stuff. Like, they get, get some of my money, they give me protection. I kind of work for them. Okay, so they're not letting you leave. Yeah, I can't. I I want to leave, but they're not really letting me. Mhm. Mm so, uh, yeah, I'm like I'm here. <laughs> they don't know. I kind of snuck here. Okay, so you got you got some free time every now and then where you can kind of do your thing and 
get out of that circle. Yeah, like once in a blue moon. So. Okay. Um, so, do you get tested at all? I mean, with your line of work, do you get tested at all? Uh, every four STDs or anything, every now and then? I think I've, I've been tested maybe twice. In the past seven years? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Past seven years? Yeah. Two or three times. Okay. I haven't been tested since maybe two years ago. Mm -hmm. So the last time I got tested. Okay, no, that's not a problem. We can uh, we can arrange for many of those things. So what I understand right now is that you need um, shelter. First of all, a way to get away safely mm -hmm. um, from uh, from the person that's keeping you, um, and you need a source of income, and um, you kind of need also legal aid for your pending charges. No. Yeah. Okay. Um, so for your sister, we can try and reach out for her. We can try and uh, see if, um, if she wants to um, meet up or talk, if that's okay with you right now, or did you want to wait a little bit on it? I, I think I'm going to wait a little bit. You want to wait a little yeah. bit? Yeah, that's not a problem. Not a problem at all. But I don't really know if she wants to see me at all, so mm -hmm. maybe something else. like get in contact with her so we don't really see but at least know she's okay mm -hmm. it's okay see it's definitely hard but we we can try it out everything starts out hard and then eventually you know we work through it we work through it together um i will, will definitely be here helping you um along with my agency and everyone okay. um so i and um what are what are things you hope to achieve eventually after you know getting out and yeah. get a job, get a place to stay, you know, do something positive in my life. Just what do you mean by positive? What's po what's something that you think is positive to you and you want to do? Having a steady job that actually pays me with a paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice. That'd be nice. Uh, maybe own a place on my own. You want to just own a home? Yeah. Not having to deal, not having to live on the streets and deal with all, all the crap that I have to deal with. Mm -hmm. Getting away from that guy would be the best. That guy, you just need to get away from him. Yeah. I'm, I've been working for him for too long, so I just, I, I need to get out. I can't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm scared. You're scared for your safety? Yeah. So, um, would you uh, want to um, inform any authorities at all about that? At this moment, I think it would probably make things worse. So, not at the moment. So when would be a good time? Uh, I don't know. Let me get back to you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So maybe do you think after maybe you're settled and maybe we get you into a shelter or or do you want to, what do you want to do first before you do that? I can do the shelter then. Right? You want to get into a safe shelter away where the person can't find you? Yeah. Okay. Um, Okay, so what what helps you cope kind of with everything that's going on? What's um, um sometimes I drink. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't dabble in drugs that much, but you know, sometimes I do a little bit. It's more so the drinking. Sometimes I just go on walks and stuff. Mm -hmm. that's, that's about it. So when you have free time, you get out and go on walks. Yeah, I don't really have much chance to do anything else, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, is that why you asked me if it's okay to come in when you're hungover? Uh, yeah. Yeah? Because, um, I kind of, is the only thing I know works for me. Mm -hmm. um, it makes me not think about things. Okay. So. 
there's going to be, I know I'm not a lightweight in any right, but I know I can, but there's going to be days when I might be a little, you know, tips from mm -hmm. the other night, so. Okay. Um, so, what are things that you, okay, so we're going to try and go on to a positive note kind of here. Um, so what are things that you kind of like about yourself in in general? Can be anything. I think I'm a pretty happy person, all things considered. Yeah. Um, pretty loyal. So loyal in what sense? Like to your friends, to your Yeah. Pretty loyal. Mm -hmm. If I say I'm I'm saying I want to do something, I usually do it, like, yes, you're committed. I told, like, that's the only reason I'm here, because Candy told me. Mm -hmm. So, That's I, a positive thing, that you, the fact that you went out of your way to seek help and try and get out of the situation that you yourself don't like is a, uh, is definitely a positive start. We can always, that's a great, great start that we can start at. Um, so like you say that you're happy, all things considered. But what's one thing that kind of gives you pleasure when you do it, makes you very happy, genuinely? You know, hearing music. Sometimes I like, when I'm on my walks, I walk by churches and I hear the, the music. Mm -hmm. That kind of makes me happy. Yeah. Um, the, <laughs> the drinking, really. The drinking kind of makes me happy. Mm -hmm. It makes me not, like I said, it makes me not think about all the bad stuff around me. It just makes me think about drinking. Okay. So. It kind of takes you to another dimension, if <laughs> you yeah. were going to say. Okay, so, but, I mean, you mentioned Candy a lot, and I, can, I understand she's pretty close to you, mm -hmm. but do you have anyone else in your life, like any other friends that you, that help you through tough times and I I wouldn't say I got a lot of like friends. Candy's like my only real friend. I got a few people like I that have helped me out here and there, like to stay in like like stay at their places for a couple yeah. of days, a couple of nights. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, I don't we don't really par like that or really hang out too much. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. It's only really Candy that, that I'm really, really close with. She's been there through all the good times and the bad, and really I would try and do anything for her. That is a great thing, honestly, that you have a, at least, a, at least someone in your life that's like, that's that, that you're that close to. Um, so it looks like um, uh, the session's about to end. Um, I have one thing to tell you though. Um, I will be leaving the country. I have to be going to a conference for a few months um, in the States. Um, however, I will refer you to a really, really good colleague of mine. I've worked with her for a while, even before this agency as well. She is, um, she's honestly, I think she's amazing. I hope that you, um, I hope that you would um, in, enjoy her company. She's, uh, she's very understanding. Um, is that something you're okay with, or did you, what's, uh, what you do you... You're recommending her? I recommend her, honestly. She's a very good person. Um, I guess. Uh, yeah, I guess that's cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if you're not going to be here, I guess, I can talk to her. If you, if you recommend her. So I, I believe, I personally believe she's a really good person, but don't just base your opinion on my, uh, on my, uh, on my opinion. Um, I would like you to meet her. Um, and if you don't like her in any sense, then honestly, just you don't have to uh, see her. However, we would like to, um, we would still like to keep in contact because of the whole um, safety issue going on. Okay. We need to, like, um, if you can come in every now and then and just kind of check in, <coughs> have a, a little chat with her, you know, um, just until I come back, it will be just for, I think, a month or two. Okay. I'm not going to be gone for too long, but um, I, I'm, I would appreciate it if that's what, I don't know if you would like to do that or not. Sure. What's her, what's this person's name? Uh, her name is Susie. Okay. All right. Uh, when, when's my next session? Or when can I 
make another one? Um, I have. I actually prepared. She has a, a couple of openings, one this week and one next week. Um, one is on uh, Friday this week. Okay. Um, and then the other one's on um, uh, Tuesday next week. I don't know which one would you like better. Uh, so we can just we can do Tuesday. Tuesday of the next week. Okay, yeah. so that will be um, around two p.m. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. All right. Well, um, is there any questions that you have for me at all? Regarding anything, um, I will personally sit down with her and give her all the information that you gave me. The fact that you, um, especially about the safety issues, because we need to ensure that you are safe first and foremost, um, and also about everything else, all of your concerns, the the fact that you want to get in contact again with your uh, sister, your uh, the the fact that you need to that you want to get a job and want to get out of that um, cycle, and um, and also get into a shelter. We will try and address all of them, and I will actually really tell about the whole religious beliefs thing because um, we would uh, we will we will all want to work together and kind of um, help provide for your needs. Okay. Okay. So, do you have any other questions for me? Uh, where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> I am going to California. Okay. It is a um, a conference that I'm going to. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. I guess all right. I'll. I'll see the Susie person. <laughs> um, I hope you like her. She's pretty nice. Okay. We'll see how that goes, okay? Well, thank you for talking to me. Not a problem. It was my pleasure meeting you. Okay.